David, give us some context here for this potential move by Carl Icahn. Do we know why he wants to potentially sell this business, the, the Felpro engine parts business? Sure, so Carl Icahn's been in the auto parts business for a long time, right? He bought federal mogul debt before the company went bankrupt, which was in 2001, and, and, and then he turned that into equity, and then uh, earlier this year, he bought the rest of the company and took it private. So he's had this investment for a very long time. It's tough to find a buyer for the whole thing. Uh, auto parts aren't exactly a really sexy sector right now, but this is a really good business within it. Felpro is a good brand name for people who know aftermarket parts, performance parts, and I think they probably had a little bit of interest incoming, a few calls made about it and so they they found an advisor to kind of run the traps and see if they can get a really good price and uh, you know Carl doesn't have to sell this thing because he has all these auto retail businesses and a bunch of other auto parts brands that sell through those channels so he could just kind of make money off of it and work it but if someone gives him a good price I'm sure he'd be happy to sell it and make a little bit of a return on this long-term investment he's had. And what's the likelihood David I mean you're saying he's seeking around eight times the EBITDA according to the conversations here is that price tag too high? That's yeah, a pretty fat one. Uh, you know, auto parts companies have been going at five or six. Now, this is aftermarket. They, they sell most of their parts at retail, so they do a little better, maybe seven, eight in good times. Asking eight times EBITDA yeah. is pretty aggressive. I would think, uh, based on what I've been told, he could get at least seven for it. And, um, you know, I think that will maybe test his resolve of whether or not he wants to keep it or cash in now. David, tell us a little bit more about the general conditions for the uh, aftermarket auto parts industry. We know that there's been, uh, you know, the, uh, the used car business has seen a lot of disinflation or deflation that hasn't been that robust. How does that follow through uh, from the parts perspective? Well, look, one of the things that's really hurt the aftermarket parts business, particularly the retail side that he's on, is you've got uh, Amazon in there. You've got a lot of online business going mm. in. And so then when it becomes about price, it, it becomes a little bit tougher to really get good pricing. Look, right now, in, in terms of the retail for these aftermarket parts, you've got a handful of really big players out there with stores. And it's, it's just tough for some of these brands to get really good shelf space and get really good pricing from these guys. A lot of it's been commoditized. That could be another motivation that Icon has, is that he really just sees a good time to get out of it because it, it just doesn't look like the pricing and profitability of it is going to get any better. Yeah, you called it fact, David. I was kind of implying this price might be a bit rich. On that line, who would buy this? Who do you think a potential bidder could be? What I'm hearing right now is it's mostly private equity firms that are looking at it. There aren't a lot of strategic companies that are in the, the gasket business, and that's mostly what Felpro does. We're talking about sealants and that sort of thing. Uh, Dana Corporation does it, but you know, you're talking about a couple of companies uh, in a business. They might even have antitrust there. It's, it's, it's a market that isn't studied closely, so it's hard to say. But private equity funds, a lot of them do like the auto parts business. Uh, it, it does have uh, you know pretty good steady cash flow to it, particularly something that's aftermarket. So um, you know you could see players like CVC potentially looking at it. That's one firm. Advent uh, they, they've liked the auto parts business. You know it would be a private equity player that's not afraid of a capital intensive business or you know like an industrial company.